Limited. Limited, limited government. Limited government. Government that's so small it fits within the confines of the Constitution, mm -hmm. like it's supposed to, like the Founding Fathers meant it to. Uh, so uh, most of your viewers, I think, will appreciate the concept that people should be able to live their lives the way they see fit. That's what a democracy is all about. Well, okay, so this, this other initiative is coming up. Is uh, There's a marijuana oh, that's initiative right. coming that's up? That's right. Well, actually, it's a term limits initiative. Uh -huh. And what this is, is to, we have term limits now for state assembly, we have it for the governor, we have it for, uh, for state senate, we have it for the city council, San mm -hmm. Diego City Council, but not for the county board of supervisors yet. Oh, okay. And most of the media attention has been on, on races where there's somebody other than an incumbent winning. The incumbency gives an enormous power for, for getting reelected. It does. And, Especially uh, with all the campaign finance reform, because oh if, you yeah, wanna, absolutely. if you want to get rid of the guy that's in there, he can use the office to get publicity for his re-election campaign. That's correct. And you're hindered in making money or collecting enough money to That's correct. Yeah, the incumbent, the, in, the incumbent has all those benefits that are put in place by campaign refinance, <laughs> campaign reform, right. finance reform. Which yeah, are right. well intended, but they, they simply don't work. Well, I don't know if they're well intended. I guess you'd have to say decide who's who's intending it. Right. Well, what we're told is we're told you know they're supposed to get money out of politics and make it more fair. We're not against that, but usually it, it brings more money and probably backfires. It doesn't work. That's the right. way it's supposed to. So what this does is it it gives but with the term limits by putting term imposing term limits for the county San Diego County Board of Supervisors what that'll mean is is that these races will now be more competitive there will be a chance for somebody other than the incumbent to to be elected because after a while the term the, the incumbent will be term limited out uh, the, the um, these candidate these people are the county board of supervisors they're supposed to be elected but they think they're anointed right they 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 get reelected every time. It's like a lifetime, it's like a lifetime job for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, libertarians, and a lot of your viewers, I think, will agree with this too. Is that we want people to get into office, do what they were intended to do, and then get out. We don't right. want them to be career politicians. Career politicians. I and mean, if they have a goal to do, get it done with, and, and move on. Uh, so maybe what's also needed too. I mean, libertarians like term limits because it limits the power of the politician. What happens too when someone's elected is that they maybe they go to city council and they run for state assembly, then they run for, you know, state senate, and they can go back and forth between all the different jobs or county supervisors. So what would be good is to some kind of term limit that says you can only hold three offices <laughs> in a state. That well, might be good too. That maybe, maybe. I think what the issue though is is that if the people are good in one office, then they are going to be allowed to go on to some other office, mm -hmm. and if they're competent people, then they'll be and and they and they follow the will of the voters, then they're going to be elected to uh, after maybe board of supervisors, maybe they'll be elected to city council, maybe elected to state assembly, then state senate, then congress, and uh, for example, uh, there's this term limits proposal would limit the term of the county board of supervisors to two four-year terms. That's eight years. That's mm -hmm. eight years. Right now, we also have term limits on city council. That's also eight years. And then we have in state assembly, that's six years, and we have state senate, which I think is um, also eight years. So what are you going to be doing? Are you going to be helping, helping to get this on the ballot, or are you sponsoring this initiative? Uh, well, yes. We've passed today at our convention, we passed a resolution supporting this, this measure, this initiative, and we will be getting members to participate, collecting signatures. We will be talking it up with our friends and neighbors and getting them to sign the, the initiatives. That's, that's part of the signature gathering process. How many signatures will you need? I think about 100,000. And this is going to be for San Diego alone or the entire state? San Diego County. This is the county, okay. San Diego County Board of Supervisors. So you can pass the term limits within a county for a, sure. just that county? Sure. But mostly term, people are familiar with term limits on the, the state and the federal level. Uh, well, there are no term limits for Congress or state for, for U.S. Senate, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, there are the term limits for the Not president. Yet. No. But there are, for, the, for example, for the president. Right. That was really the first term limit that we really had maybe, in the United maybe. States. Yeah, maybe so. Was. Maybe so. We decided that, that was a good idea. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> what about if, although let's say as libertarians, elect someone that we really like, 
unfortunately, after a certain point, there'll be term limited. Out. Well, as I was pointing out earlier, if you tack, if you have, if you have somebody who's doing a good job, uh, even if they lose the, if, if they can be reelected to a higher office or a different office, because if they're doing a good job, they'd be, they, but they would be elected. At that point, they'd be elected under merits rather than their incumbency. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. If you add up all those those term limits I talked about, eight years, four years, six years, eight years, I mean that's like 30, I forgot how much it was, but it's probably like 30 or 40 years worth mm -hmm. of, 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 uh, of uh, you could be in office for a long time. That's most more than most people are in any kind of job. Any kind of career. Any kind of career, that's right, that's right. So who are going to be your allies in this, do you think? Well, term limits is very popular with the well, very popular, and I, we think that something like 60 to 70 percent of the voters would go for it. It cuts across all political so, so all parties. So you have to do is just get this on the, the ballot. I, yeah, that's what we think. Well, of course, it's never that easy. Obviously, there's going to be spurious arguments raised by opponents, people who are going to lose influence, people who are going to lose all of the the uh, favors which they've been giving away to right. these politicians, and they won't be able to get them back if their candidate gets out of office. So those people... Uh, which brings us back to the idea of, uh, of term limits limiting the power. That's and correct. Campaign finance reform has made it more difficult to get That's right. incumbents out of office, but our solution to our campaign finance reform is to limit the power of the politicians. That's absolutely right. Because a lot of this, the, the problem is, the politicians are too powerful. That's so correct. That's, so let's deal with that problem, reduce some of the power that the politicians That's have right. that they can sell off. That's absolutely right. You're and absolutely then right. that is the way, so we want campaign finance reform, we would just handle it differently. Yeah, that's an interesting way of putting it. Campaign, campaign finance reform is actually when the candidates are financing their campaign by using their office to give special favors to mm -hmm. special interest groups. That's that's an, that's the way. That's one way of putting it. And to get reelected. Now, if someone wants to get involved with this or anything else that the Libertarian Party of San Diego is doing, where can they go? Well, I would suggest they first of all check out the Libertarian Party website. That's uh, here in San Diego. Is www sdlp.org that's San Diego Libertarian Party sdlp.org and there's a number they can call that's correct uh, area code 858 530 1776 so that's area code 858 530 1776 1776 that's, that's the that's the Libertarian Party that's a uh, county offices that shouldn't be too hard and for those of you who would like any more information on the uh, the National Libertarian Party, you can go to lp.org, or you can give us a call at 1-800-ELECT-US, or if you'd like to learn more about libertarianism, you can just type that into your search engine, and uh, you can get a lot of information that way. And you can also usually, in most states, register to vote as a libertarian at your local post office or anywhere where there's voter registration form. So thanks for watching. Thanks for coming out. Thank you very much. And we'll thanks see for you having next me. time on The Libertarian Alternative. Thank you. Don't give up.